Hey, Stiddy on here, um, and uh, in this video I'm going to be showing how to create a team changing GUI. Um, and this will be working with non experimental mode because experimental mode got removed. Essentially, previously you would make a team changing GUI um, and it would do everything in a local script. What that means is everything would be done on your computer if you changed team, but that's not um, possible without uh, experimental mode. So you have to use server-sided scripts now, as well as local scripts. If that doesn't make sense, it will soon. So keep watching. Okay, so we're going to make a team change GUI, obviously. We need to make a GUI to start with. Uh, so I'll just make a very basic uh, UI, like this. And we'll center it with a point. Okay, and I'm just going to make two buttons for two different teams. Uh, using a very similar method, you can have as many teams as you want. So we'll also use 0.45. And so for this, I'm using scale, which allows you to uh, make the size of things relative to the uh, size of the relative to the size of the screen. So for this, we'll just do uh, police and criminal team because presumably a lot of people are going to be wanting to make it like jailbreak or something like that. So we're going to duplicate this text button now, move it across, and then we're going to have criminal here, but we'll just expand this a bit because it's a bit small. I don't know, you could edit the text using the UI editor. Okay, uh, this one's going to be, of course, oops, sorry, it's not very, it's a bit annoying, the UI editor at the moment. Criminals, and I'll make it red. Okay, so we've got police and criminals. I'll just move this in a bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So we've got our team change uh, UI, we can see it. So now we're just gonna create a script to deal with the local side of detecting the clicks and then enacting on those clicks. So detect team change, let's call it that. Um, and here we're gonna define a couple of variables. So I'll start off with the two buttons. First thing I do actually need to name these, because currently they have no names. So we'll call this one police, because it's obviously the police button, and we'll call this one a criminal. Um, and just for the sake of if you wanted to make multiple buttons, more than two, um, I'm going to make it so that essentially or if you wanted to make more than two teams here, more than police and criminals, all you have to do is add more buttons and you just put them inside this folder here and we'll call this folder team buttons. Okay, uh, so we, we've got this. We still need to add the teams themselves. There's no teams in the game right now. Um, so we're just gonna go, I think here, yep, just go team. Oh wait, no, that's wrong. We go, uh, where is it? Um, <laughs> oh, you used to be able to click service here, but I can't click service anymore, I'm not sure. Uh, what's happening there, but I can't click service. You used to be able to click service and then import the team service. One second. Um. Right. So I'm really not sure. Okay, here we go. Click service and then click teams and then click insert. Right. So we have the team service now. Uh, and into this, we're just going to right click on it, or we can click on this plus actually. And we'll just insert a team. And I'm going to insert two teams, because we have two teams, of course. Um, and one of them is going to be called police. And the other one will be called criminals. You name these teams exactly what you want the teams to be called, obviously, not police and criminals. If your teams, obviously, you do call them police and criminals if your teams are police and criminals. <laughs> uh, but it's up to you what you name the teams, obviously. So, so, um, what we're going to do, so, so it's very important that these two buttons, these two, need to be named exactly the same thing as your two teams are called, or however many, however many teams you have. Okay, so we'll go back to this detect team change script, and we're going to create some variables. So we're going to create a variable called team buttons, and that's going to be script parent dot team buttons, oops, team buttons, and then get children. Now the reason we're doing this is, you can see the script is here, and you can see the folder with the two buttons in is at the same level. So all we have to do is say script dot parent. So you can see we've done that there, script dot parent. Um, and then we say dot team buttons, because it's, it's a child, and then we just get all the children 
of this folder. That's what they're called. Things inside another object are called children. So what we're doing here is we're getting all of these. There's only two in there, but as I said, you can add as many as you want. And then we're going to have, um, actually, we'll add something there later, but for now, we're going to move on. We're going to say for team button in pairs team buttons. And essentially what we're doing here is we're saying we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go through the list of team buttons we've just created here um, in, in a for loop, which is like a, a loop that repeats every time, well, it repeats multiple times. Um, in this case, it's repeating until it's gone through the entire list of buttons. So it'll repeat twice. And this here, this uh, variable it creates is the item it's currently iterating through. So what that means is if I say... Um, Team button, mouse, button one, click, connect, brackets, and then function, close brackets there. What this is doing is it's saying when whatever button we're currently on gets clicked, that's what mouse button one click means, it's going to uh, fire a function, and then here we've got the contents of that function. Um, and both of these, because this for loop runs for every single team button, both of these uh, will work uh, due to this one function we've got here. So, but we do very little on the client. In this local script, there's not really much else we need to do. Uh, so we're going to create a script in server script service. And server script service scripts are obviously server scripts. Um, and I'll call it teams. Actually, no, I'll call it team change. Um, and in this script, we're going to create a, well, actually, in this script, is what's going to happen in this script is that the player will actually have their team changed. But to communicate between this client script or local script and this server script, or just script, we need something called a remote event. So remote events have to be put in either the workspace, replicated storage, or any other area that's shared by the server and the client. The most common place we do it is replicated storage. So we're going to insert an object and we're going to insert a remote event. If I can find it, um, here, remote event. Okay, and this is going to be called, let's call it change player team. Okay, now, right now we're in this server script, and we're going to reference this remote event we've just created. So we'll say la local uh, team change, oops, change event equals game replicated storage wait for child. Well, actually, no, we don't need to wait for child, but in the server script. Uh, replicated storage dot change player team. This is what we just created here, the remote event. And to detect when it's been fired on the client or when the client wants to change the team, what we have to say is team change event a dot uh, on server event, which is when something is fired the server, when something is uh, requesting something from the server, and then colon connect. Okay, and we're going to put the function in here. And this creates a function. We'll add some things here and we'll add some things here soon. But first, we're going to go back to our local side script inside our UI. Um, and we're going to go to this for loop. And then we're also going to add a variable here, like I said we do earlier. So this variable is once again going to be referencing this same remote event. And because it's in replicated storage, both the server and the client scripts can see this. So we'll call it change team event. And we'll reference it by going game re re replicated storage dot wait actually we'll wait for it this time because we're in a client script we have to wait for it otherwise it might error uh, change player team and that reminds me we should be waiting for the child on script parent as well because it may not be loaded yet when you're in a when you're in a uh, client sided script or a local script you should wait for child on everything you're looking for so we've got the remote event here we're going to copy the change team event variable name, uh, and we're going to put it, put it, paste it here, and then we're going to say colon fire server, and what this does is it sends a request to the server from the player who's just clicked the button, uh, and right now it actually says nothing. It doesn't really tell the server anything at all. It just tells the server what player has clicked the button. So we can't do anything with this at the moment. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to add between these brackets, we're going to add a parameter called that, that communicates what team the player wants to change to. So we'll say team button 
dot name. And the reason we're doing that is because earlier when we created these buttons, we called them the exact names of the teams we want. So therefore, when we put team button dot name, we're actually sending the name of the team we want to change over to the server. So you can see we've fired the server, and we've actually done everything we need to in this local side script. So we'll just close it, um, and we'll go back to the server script team change. Now, what this does is it says when the person clicks the button, and then it sends a server event. Remember when we said fire server, that's a server event. This will be triggered. And automatically, you get an argument, a parameter called player. But then we've also sent that team name argument. So we'll call it team name as a parameter. Um, and now, all we need to do is change the player's team. So literally, all we have to do is say player dot team is equal to game teams find first child team name, and that's literally all we need to do. I should note that if you're doing this seriously uh, and each team has a restriction on whether or not you can join it, then you should be checking in the server script whether or not they're allowed to join that team or not. But this should work for most purposes. You can see we've got criminals team, but there's no police team. Uh, hang on a second. <laughs> not sure why there's no police team, but if we click police, uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. One second. Uh, team engines. Yep. Mass button click connect. Okay. Um, we've got these two buttons. We've got the two teams. Oh, sorry. So when you're creating teams, obviously, this isn't a problem with my scripts. It's actually a problem with how I set up the teams. You need different colors for the teams. So we'll say team color really blue and team color really red. I think you can set the player's team property. You might have to set it by color. We'll see. Nope, there we go. Works fine. So when we click these buttons, we change between the police and criminal team. Um, and that's literally it. Uh, I'll just very quickly set up an extra button for an extra team. So let's try that out. So if I go here, uh, I can't actually change these buttons for some reason. It's not letting me. But if I go here and I add a new button, and we'll call this civilians. And then we'll also add a new team here. We'll call this team civilians with a yellow color. Um, and then we just decrease the size of these so that we can fit in the civilian team button. And I'll just move it along a bit. And we'll do the same thing with this one. There. And we'll make the civilian team button yellow for the civilian team because that's the color of the civilian team. Um, and I'll just move this over tiny bit, and then make it a bit smaller as well. 2-5? 2 <laughs> Okay. So now we've got the police team, the criminal team, I should say civilian team here. Civilians. Okay. And I'll make that black, because you can't actually read the text there. Okay. So when we play the game now, We've got three teams, and we haven't actually had to make any changes to the scripts, but all three work because we scripted the code in a way that means that we can add to it and we won't have to change the code. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.